<laughs> Surprise! So, as promised, I'm here to do, uh, I got a bunch of questions, uh, well, I asked the question, I asked the question of what would you like to see for some of our, I was going to do another series of the live, uh, live stream classes, so here I am for one, and, uh, good grief, it is getting to be mid to the end of May, <laughs> so kids are, you're in the end of school, and any of the, you who have kids that are in school know that May, uh, May is crazy, so I am excited about doing this, but it's definitely going to be in a uh, non-formal way, so I'm going to be live streaming it, and I know if you're reading the title of this one, you're probably kind of laughing. Believe it or not, this is a question I have been asked many times uh, while, I, I, I don't know, it's weird to say, on my career of being an online fiber arts person, but I have been approached many times by many people who uh, have wanted to pay me to spend their maybe deceased dog's hair <laughs> for them. And I have to say, this is not a job I've ever undertaken. I feel like if you Google this, there actually are people out there that will do this and maybe you wanna do this and that could be you. But this is not me. <laughs> I, uh, you know, Jolene and our pets would not be happy if we had other animals hair in here. I feel like that would be a special project that I don't have the time to do as fantastic of a job as that should be done. So instead, I'm going to answer the question that I also get a lot, which is, uh, do I have any tips for spinning pet hair? And uh, so I thought about it and I kind of laughed every time this question did come in and I always kind of chuckle when I get it. But I was like, you know what? I've gotten this question enough. <laughs> I'm gonna tackle it. So I honestly haven't really looked around on YouTube. So I'm guessing there must not be a video or too many videos on this topic and people keep asking me or I have just gotten the reputation for like hey that lady's weird I bet she could do it so uh without further ado I have tried my best even though it's probably not going I hope it's helpful if that was your question or at least this makes you laugh but um I don't know I, I hope I can do this question justice because while I am laughing about it I totally get it um pets are important you can bird in the other room who always pipes up every time I'm talking and um, then y'all know Jolene is our unofficial mascot and Suzanne our previous Cavalier um, who is in it doesn't make me kind of happy slash sad if you look back through the bajillions of YouTube videos I have at this point in time Suzanne our red and white Cavalier you will see throughout many of the first ones because she was my little buddy who's always at the house trying to sit in my lap while I was trying to film videos. So any of my older videos, um, if you see the red and white Cavalier, uh, that one is Suzanne. She was our first and she did unfortunately just, um, she passed away from, you know, old age and different things. And so now we have Jolene, who is the black and white and tan Cavalier. And uh, she is now the one who's asleep. I feel like she's lazier. Like Suzanne was lazy because Cavaliers are lazy, but I feel like Jolene was really lazy. <laughs> so she's the one that's usually asleep. And I did, I tried my best. Y'all are gonna laugh at me. We get Jolene groomed, especially in the warmer months and especially if we go on vacation because she goes and stays at my dad's when we go to South Carolina because he has a lot of land and she likes to go run around and chase lizards and squirrels and stuff. So she has kind of a summer haircut. So when I was trying to attempt this particular video, I was like, well, darn, I don't have uh, too much dog hair to work with. So I got the brush that I feel like in spinning videos, we're always talking about like DIY fiber tools. And I'm always like, get your dog brush and use it as a fiber tool. And in this case, I'm using my dog brush as a dog brush and a fiber tool. So it all came full circle. So I got my dog brush and I did which is very similar to a uh, a wool carding brush. Pretty much exactly the same thing. So I, I carded my dog, <laughs> is uh, what I'm trying to say. So at this point, she pretty much just has longer hair on her ears and her feet. So y'all, I brushed and brushed this dog, which we do anyway, and she just didn't have that much hair. So the amount of hair that I was able to end up with was not that much. And so honestly, and talking to Renee, I saw head posted on here that she has Angora rabbits. And she also had, I believe she said a sheep dog, maybe? I don't remember that she had actually blended on a blending board and 
spun dog hair yarn from that. And so the dark hair was from her dogs mixed in with other fibers. So if your dog doesn't have that much hair at this point in time, like mine, I mean, if y'all wanted me to spin yarn out of like weird abandoned craft supplies, like little bracelet rubber bands and scraps piece of construction paper that lay all over my floors all the time, thanks to my kids, I would be in business. I got those everywhere. But dog hair, I actually don't have that much of. So I wanted to kind of show you the example. And I feel like with most dog hair, I think my first tip would be you need to look at what type of dog you have. <laughs> and because, uh, I mean, if you have a lab, you're probably out of luck. If you've got a dog that has like that short waterproof, uh, you know what I'm talking about, like the waterproof hair, like yellow labs or black labs that have those short kind of really almost spiky fibers to them, I would totally abandon that project. I mean, I think the most you could do with that would be maybe take some of it. I know they shed like crazy, so it sucks because you're like, I have all this lab hair I wish I could do something with. Because it's not very downy, because it is waterproof for like sporting dogs, I just, it's not really going to grip. Because, I don't know, going back to like spinning 101 here, and this is not dog hair, this is uh, polypay, I believe. I just stole this from a, a leftover from my local wool. It might be a merino. I think it's polypay though, but you can see how springy this is. So the springiness and the fuzziness is definitely easier to spin. So if you're going back, like I said, to like spinning 101, and that's why like alpaca is fabulous, but it's also shorter fibers and they're kind of slippy. Uh, they don't hold together as well. So that's why I don't recommend, and I always get people all the time that are like, I have alpacas and I want to start learning to spin on that. And while you can, you totally can. <laughs> it might be a little bit more frustrating um, than learning on something with a longer staple length. So same idea. I would say start looking at all your dogs like you would look at different fiber animals. So we were over at a friend's house, my husband's uh, co-workers, and they had a labradoodle. Well, it was like big, la yeah, it was a labradoodle. That's what that thing was. And man, that dog, I spent the whole night like just petting him and he was so sweet and like playing with his hair. And I was like, this dog, and Philip laughed at me because he knew exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> like, I could spin this dog. So if you have a labadoodle or something like that, I mean, this dog had beautiful hair. It was like long and white and creamy and like these great staple lengths. I mean, yeah, so if you got a labadoodle, you can definitely spin a labadoodle in my opinion. So I'm gonna have to sneak back over there and like brush this guy's dog and make another video for you. But for Cavalier fur spinning, uh, which is what I have, and this is what I wanted to show you, she has these longer kind of like guard hairs <laughs> that this white one um, probably came from her foot. And this feels much more like my hair. It's a longer guard hair. And I hope you can see that with the light. And then she also had all this downy kind of fluffy hair under here that actually does have, and you can see it holds together pretty well. Um, like a, it reminds me of like Angora Rabbit because Jolene is very soft. So this I would say is most comparable to <laughs> Angora Rabbit, but there are different lengths of hair. So like I said, I'm kind of looking at that almost like I would like an Icelandic fleece where it's got like the two layers. So I know y'all are all waiting for like, hey, when's she actually gonna try to spin this? <laughs> so, trying it right here, so it's live stream, you can watch it. Um, so I've got my drop spindle for the sake of this video and I have already started. So I guess that would be, unless you just have great gobs of dog hair, um, which I don't know, for the sake of your house, I hope you do not have great gobs of dog hair. If you have just like, you're wanting to just collect the hair as you're brushing it off of your beloved dog, I would say just treat it like an Angora rabbit. <laughs> Almost of just as you're brushing the dog, just save the hair. And I'm assuming you're gonna end up with a bag and it's super lightweight. I mean, that's why like if you're buying an ounce of Angora, it's, you know, an ounce of Angora is like gold versus like an ounce of I don't know, something else like Cordell that's just gonna be heavier versus the ounce of Angora. Um, which is really fine and light. So I would recommend honestly blending it like Renee said she did, and maybe we can all sweet talk her into, uh, she's done vlogs and videos for us before. 
Renee, if you are seeing this, <laughs> maybe uh, we can twist your arm into uh, doing a little video go over of your yarn. Maybe your process, since I'm sure yours is going to turn out way better. But um, I would recommend blending it. And I started, and especially if you're on a drop spindle, I would start your spinning with something that's not dog hair and with something that's maybe a little fuzzy. This is a natural merino from one of our my local wool boxes. And so it's got this fuzzy end on it. And I really am, I promise, I'm going to try to spin this. So what I would do is get your dog here and I already kind of messed with it and I pulled it where you want to get all the fiber length I just did this with my hand kind of like pre-drafting into like where it's connected but like all the fibers are kind of going in one way and I, I mean you can kind of go through you can see like so this is my first attempt at this to kind of uh get a little bit of twist and direction you can see it's already kind of holding together I'm actually going to take off my bracelets and do that. And I'm just going to attach this or attempt to attach this to the fuzzy end of this merino because, you know, there's no way I'm going to try to attach this to the drop spindle. I'm not even going to try that. So I've already got a uh, leader. And also for the spindle, uh, shout out Jesse who made this spindle. This spindle has got a long stick, which is easy for putting behind my arm, and it also has a good bit of weight on it with this ceramic bead, which I'm hoping, so there was a planning going into this as well, I'm hoping the weight of this bead will help pull the twist into this fine dog here. So, I did, I promise guys, I actually put like forethought into this. So, um, let's see, let me get this on the hook get this on the camera. You see I have joined my dog hair to the merino right there. So I'm gonna, for the sake of this, I'm not gonna try to be anything fancy. You get the twist. I'm gonna stick it under my armpit and let's see how this goes. I'm just going to let this travel up the dog hair. <laughs> let's see, we got this going here. Let's try two hands. And like I said, I just really don't have that much at this point. I'm going to have to, if this turns out nice, actually, it's beautiful. <laughs> I'm going to have to start brushing Jolene and saving her hair. Um, and I just, I literally just ran out of the little bit of dog hair I had. But I'm actually amazed at how well that turned out. So you can see the white is the merino. You can see where I joined it right there. And then you can see this fuzzy Cavaliers King Charles uh, dog here. And like you would with Icelandic or anything else, you can see there's a couple of the longer ears, but I mean, I think they're cool. And you can always pull them out. Like you, <coughs> some of the longer ones, I mean, those are super easy to just pull out. And wrap this on here. And there goes my dryer, uh, sink, or my washing machine thing that's your look closer done song. And uh, oh, there you go. Maybe you can see it better on the spindle. But there is my dog hair <laughs> spun onto the spindle and that actually worked way better than I thought it was going to. So I'm kind of impressed with myself right now. But <laughs> anyhow, so I guess that would be my main tip is look at your dog like you would a uh, fiber animal <laughs> and just judge what type of hair they have as far as what type you'd be able to do with it. If it's really short hair, you're going to have to blend it with something. If you can get something that's got like a soft downy undercoat, like said mine's a little spaniel, so I guess something spaniel related or poodle or something like that. Honestly, you could, I mean, that was straight dog hair. <laughs> so, um, and it's so soft. Like, yeah, now I want like a whole blanket made out of Jolene. So, um, you know, you could, I would say just whether you're just kind of using your hands, cause I'm assuming you'd be brushing it off with a brush like this. So you can just kind of like you would a fiber card, pull it off kind of in like a little baby roll up or just like top fiber and just get your fibers going in the right direction. And, um, you know, then just went to kind of get it all going and you saw what I did for the rest of it. So that was, I wanted to kick off my, uh, 
<laughs> this silly live stream class uh, thing I'm going to do. I'll try to do, I think I've got about three more. And then my kids will be out of school and we're going to go out of town. So that's number one. <laughs> that's number one of four. So I hope you enjoyed that adventure. And um, I will leave this video up here for a while. And then it will probably get taken down. Have you fallen down the cottage industry rabbit hole yet? Well, if not, buckle up, Alice, and click on over to the description in the show notes and sign up. Then you can get ready for the most fun induction into the cult of all things yarn and fiber. This will include, but not limited to, free yarn, free ebooks, patterns, coupons, and much more. You don't want to miss out.